you set it up. Okay, it's set up. Just All press, down. press the red button. And there is a red button. See, there's this a red one. right there. Just press it. Both of these. And you'll see there's a red light dot comes on over there about where it's plugged in. The red and white plug. The little red dot. When it, that red dot's on, it's recording. I mean, that's all you have to do. So let's put this red dot and that red dot. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, that's a view. It's the quick one. I was joking out of sleep with Bill. But he, he knows. Nobody ever does anything.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have great reason to rejoice today because Jesus Christ is our Savior. He has forgiven our sins. And he's given us the promise and the assurance of eternal life. We have the additional prayer request this morning. Uh, two that have been given to me, uh, Jim Justine, who's being uh, tested for cancer, also for the Tippo family, uh, who uh, lost a loved one this week. Hey, yeah. I'm
deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. The most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, the word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may make life in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we receive God's forgiveness, we come before him reading responsibly the intro. Be to me a rock of refuge, to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. You who have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again. From the depths of the earth you will bring me up again. You will increase my greatness and comfort me again. I will also praise you with the heart for your faithfulness, O oh my God. I will sing praises to you with the lyre, O oh Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you. My soul also will wish you a happy And my tongue will talk of your righteous health all the day long.
evil desires from us, and pour into our hearts your Holy Spirit to guide us into all blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
they sailed to the country of the Gerizim, which is opposite Galilee, when Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and had not lived in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds, and he was driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. And they begged him to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. And the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. And people went out to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. And all the people of the surrounding country of the garrisons asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs>
So have you ever had a problem that was so big you couldn't solve it? Yeah? Sometimes we have those problems, and they're very difficult to deal with. We get frustrated because we want to be able to fix everything, but it can't be fixed. We don't know what to do. But Jesus is with us, and he's promised to take care of us. And he has given us the ultimate solution to every problem. And that is the promise not only of his forgiveness, but the resurrection. But no matter how bad our problems are, when Jesus comes back, they're all going to be fixed. And so we have that assurance. And so sometimes, you know, we want a problem uh, or a fix now, but it doesn't always come. But we know that God can take care of our problems because he took care of our biggest problem. And what was that? Yeah. <laughs> what? Death. Yeah, yeah, sin and death. And so he took care of that by sending Jesus to die on the cross. And so we can be sure that he's going to take care of all of our smaller problems too. Are you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for taking care of my problem. In Jesus' name. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the psalm appointed for this day, Psalm 3. O Lord, how many are my foes! Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, and save me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So his father was very powerful. He was wealthy beyond what most of us can imagine. And he knew that he could never compete with his father because of, of his father's great power and that he would just fade into the background, that he would become at best a historical footnote. But he wasn't satisfied with that. The only way that he could make a name for himself was to plot against his father, to carve out his own niche, even if it was in blood. And so through smooth talk and manipulation, he became very powerful. He amassed an army behind him to challenge and defend his false cause. And he became a hero to his people, all of it just to upstage his father. His name Osama bin Laden. The head of Al Qaeda, though, was not the first son to rebel against his father. We also see a striking example in David's son Solomon, or Absalom. Sorry, wrong son. Absalom usurped his father's authority, and he turned the people against David. He led a rebellion to the point that David had to flee from his own son. But what do you do when your child becomes your enemy? You do what David does, what we see in this psalm. You leave it in God's hands, and you pray that God deliver you, that God save you. And we've all been in David's situation. Maybe not your son trying to wrest your kingdom away by leading a rebellion against you, but have you ever had an enemy that was some there was somebody that you deeply care about. 
Maybe it was a rebellious child who makes your life miserable. And you love that child and you don't want them to be your enemy. You care about them and you want them to know your love, but you don't know how to fix the problem. It could be a spouse or another close friend. And you care deeply for that person. And you don't want to experience the pain that you experience when you're with that person. But at the same time, you don't really want to be apart. And you feel miserable either way, whether you're with that person or away. It can even be a parent. How can you not love your parents? It's somebody that you, you have to love them, right? And yet they drive you crazy. Well, God knows exactly what you're feeling. Because he loved Absalom too. He even loves Osama bin Laden. He even loves you. Even though you drive him crazy. He gives you everything. And you plot against him. And you say, oh, me? No, I've, I've never plotted against God. I've never tried to usurp his kingdom. So you're saying that you've never tried to justify your sin instead of just confessing it to God? It's not gossip. It's free speech. The first fruits offerings, that's only when there's a financial crisis, when there's a great need of some kind, which is a contradiction of the meaning of first fruits offerings. I can look and let my mind wander as long as I don't touch or get caught. I go to church to hear God's word there. Isn't that enough? Better than most people. When we sin, we break God's heart. This is what God says in Genesis 6. The Lord was sorry that he had made humans on the earth. He was heartbroken. He gives so much to us. But we're happy to be God's enemies instead. Not that we want to be God's enemies. It's not that when we get up in the morning we set out to work against God in every way we can. We just don't care enough to pay attention to which side we're on. To who we're fighting for. If you flirt with the devil, you're cheating on Jesus. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, God cares about sin. Yes, sin breaks God's heart. And yes, sin makes us enemies of God. And yet, through his tears, even as we beat him and mocked him and embedded a crown of thorns on his head, he said, Father, forgive them. He was not willing to leave us as his enemies. And so he bought us with his own life. So no matter how much you hurt him, no matter how many times you side with the devil against him, he doesn't want to live without you. And so he reached out to you with his nail-pierced hand and died in your place. And then rose in triumph over his true enemies, sin and death and the devil. And since he defeated them, they can no longer hold you. You are, and you always will be, Jesus' true love. By his death, you are no longer an enemy to him. And by his resurrection, he has promised to introduce you to his Father, and to vouch for you, and has made you an heir to his kingdom forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank <laughs> you.
God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life and Amen. Even though we were enemies of God, because he has claimed us as his own, we claim him as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> Mindful of our merciful rescue from sin and the free gift of our salvation, let us pray for the whole Christian church on earth and for all people according to their needs. For all the baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, that through daily repentance and forgiveness the Holy Spirit would preserve us in the true faith and bring us to everlasting life with all the saints. Lord, in your mercy, for those struggling with sin, that they may be released from its bondage, for all who are burdened with false accusations of sin, that they may be assured of their justification by grace through faith in Christ. For all who have strayed from Christ's church, that they may return to the Christian faith. For those who have lost their faith, that the devil be cast out, and that Jesus enter into their hearts and minds. And for all unbelievers, that they may be converted to the only true and living God. Lord, in your mercy. For our government, especially the President and Congress, that our country may be preserved from discord and strife, for the leaders of the nations and for all those in authority, that a spirit of respect and understanding may grow among the nations, and that peace in the world may prevail. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For favorable weather during planting and tending of crops in preparation for their harvest, for those who work in commerce and industry, that they find safety and fulfillment in their given vocations. And for all that we would remember to give thanks for all the blessings God continues to provide. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For fathers belonging to this congregation, that they would be examples to their children of faithfulness to God and love toward their wives. For those children without fathers, that God would find suitable substitutes, that he would shelter and protect parentless children from all harm and danger. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For the elderly and homebound, for widows and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, especially we pray for Joyce, Victoria, Debbie, Phil, Heather, Harriet, Lenny, Bonnie, Bev, Deb, Judith, the White Hills, Savannah, Glenda, Kathy, Wendell, Randy, Linda, the Hudgenses, John, Darlene, Katrina, Peter, Becky, Lois, Kara, Paul, Faye, Bill, Glenn, Jan, Greg, Don, Eileen, Catherine, Evelyn, Carol, Dolly, Jim. And for those for whom death is drawing near, that God would strengthen their faith in Jesus, that they would find patience and trust until the Lord grants them deliverance, peace, and health. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For all those who mourn the lost loved ones, especially the Tidlow family and the Danish family, that the Holy Spirit would give them comfort in their time of loss and reassure them that our God is the God of the resurrection and the life. Give them comfort until that time that they be reunited in your hands, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
for all those who serve in dangerous positions, especially for Tom, Jason, David, Roy, Mike, David, Eli, Jack, John, Nick, and Matthew, that God would watch over them and guard and protect them all their days. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who rejoice in God's goodness, for the love that he has shown to them, we pray especially for those celebrating birthdays this week, Stephanie, Matthew, Nicole, and also for those who celebrate his love through their own marriages. We pray for John and Glenna, Paul and Betty, Dale and Teresa, that the Lord would send his Holy Spirit on them, that through their love for each other they may experience his love for them, and in turn share that love with all they need. Lord, in your mercy. For the children who attended our Vacation Bible School this week, that God would send his Holy Spirit to work through that word that has been declared to them, that they may recognize his love and all their lives be kept in the one true faith. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who come to the Lord's table this day to eat and drink Christ's body and blood, the repenting of their sins, they may receive forgiveness, grace, strengthening of faith and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Can you see this? Can you see what? Wow.
you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
charged us with this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to do the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Just to get a sense of how big this thing really was. 
And uh, so just a, a really big thank you on all of that. Uh, reminder that we do have a Bible class tonight, and so I invite you to join us for that. And uh, council's meeting Monday night, so church council, please attend that. Uh, board of Ed was last week, so uh, ignore that. That was a change in the schedule. Any other announcements? Great. Uh, relative to the council meeting, all members are wel welcome to attend. It's not something that you need to avoid. If you'd like to be there, it's there. And I will be at council this week, so hopefully all the council members will come. I just want everybody to know that Jason Palmquist is still doing makeup acolyting from his uh, <laughs>
Sorry. 